Looks like we're live. Alright, let's see. Just a moment. Okay. The purpose of this stream is to learn how to patch a hole in my shirt using a ladder stitch. Here we go. Hey, what's good? It's PDB. Hey, Bella, I see you're in chat. Um, this is going to be a little bit chaotic, uh, hopefully. I know what I'm doing, and hopefully I learn to know what I'm doing. Uh, I am in possession of a problem. Now, luckily, the shop downstairs lent me some needle and thread, and uh, I've got a hole in my shirt because of a delivery I made, and I caught it on a doorknob as I was entering someone's apartment to put the packages on the floor of the mailroom. I'm real mad about this. I really like this shirt, so I'm going to learn how to patch it myself. How you doing tonight, Bella? How is it going? That's serrated milliner in chat. For the record of history, one of my very good friends. Let's see, let me close some tabs that are uh, not contributing to this. Now, I don't know about the, um, the, how would you say it? The, uh, can I play someone else's video while I'm streaming and I won't get taken down? I don't know quite how this works. I think it should be fine. Um, let me see if I... Uh, pretty good rereading 177076 tonight. Nice. I gotta take another look at that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's damn good, but I never finished it in the first place. So, uh, I gotta read it to completion. So hopefully, uh, let's figure this out. And I'm just going to be, I've got the big view, because what's the point of replaying someone else's video? But you'll be able to hear the audio, I'm pretty sure. I don't have a scene set up for um, showing my view and the, uh, the cameras, my view and the screen at the same time. But in any case, yeah, um, uh, let's just dive into it. How to repair a hole in a t-shirt. How to sew a hole. I want to be able to keep chat visible. So I guess I'll do it like this. Hmm. Let's see. I don't really need to see my own video. <laughs> okay. So then we have... Let me see. Ooh. All right. Let's see. Well, someone else appears to be in chat. Hello, whoever you are. Or someone else is watching, at least. Let's see, where is it? How to Sew a Hole in Clothing by Cinderella Sew. Let's watch this one. Let's check the audio levels. Oh, you guys don't actually have desktop audio on. All right, let me add a desktop audio source. Crap. Ho 
do I do this? You know what? It doesn't matter. Let's just get into it. Okay. Flip the item inside out. Okay, I've already got the thread through the needle. All the way through. Of all the night to have a Butterfinger. Bella, you know a thing or two about hats in your name. Do you ever work with other types of fabrics? Is there a better place I can prop the camera so you guys can see the work more closely? I'll admit this isn't the ideal setup. Let's see. Can I prop it, like, right here or something? I don't know. What if I... I don't... Hmm. Caring about presentation. <laughs> Caring about presentation greater than content. Uh, let's just see if I can sort of like nestle it into the fabric in such a way that it rests properly. Can I put it on the calculator? <sighs> annoying, annoying, annoying. I'm always like this. Presentation ahead of content. I need to learn to be better about this. Let's just do it. Let's just make it good. The one thing I really learned about is Frey Check keeps phrased ends from loosening more. Well, that's good to know about. Frey Check. All right. Frey Check. Isn't that the guy who did the clown music, Julius Frey Check? <laughs> All right. No, that's Julian uh, Fuchik. Okay. 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 We're going to start at one side of the hole. Okay, I see how she's got it. So in this video, she's got it pinched up like this. Along the length of the hole. Okay. Mr. Incredible becoming frayed and his pixel interpolation keeps getting more ske Shut the hell up. <laughs> this is your you are this stitch. Double knot stitch, ladder back. <laughs> Christ. All right. Okay. Okay. Redo the stitches along the seam line. Threaded needle. Oh. Okay. Okay. Okay, I think I see it. I think I see what to do. Okay. As back through from back through from the same side in a loop. Okay, as close to the same hole as we can. One pixel 
Although I guess if it's a cross stitch or whatever, it would be a cruxel, right? Cruxel art. Okay. Okay, did I do this correctly? I'm not quite certain that I've done this correctly. Looks like she ends up with the, um, the loop over on this side. Okay. Let's see. She puts it in from underneath. Okay. Okay. Let's see. Do I have to hold on to the other end? No, I don't. That's interesting. All right. Hey, look at that. Okay. Two or three times. Okay. Okay, I can do that. Let's see. It does make a nice knot. Yes, it does. Through the same hole? Okay, I think I see what to do. So I have to put it down in through the same hole, pull it out, and then pull it up. Okay, do that a second time. Clean. Bella, how was your day? Okay, I'm gonna do that one more time. Bella, how was your day, dude? You doing okay? How was your day? Not bad. Those knots are holier than that. <laughs> yeah, probably. That seems reasonable. I don't know if I have enough thread. I might. All right. It was pretty good for a Monday. Work went by fast. Nice. Nice. Glad to hear it. Yeah, my work went too, by fast, too. On Saturdays, we uh, uh, get ahead of ourselves for our Monday load. So uh, we actually had a pretty light load today. Only uh, like 130 stops. Come down and out on the same side and pull the needle through. Okay. How's the mending going? Hey, Izzy. Hey. You get a wrench. Izzy gets a wrench. All right. Ah, the mending is going well. I'm figuring it out. I think I got this. Um, I'm following a tutorial by Cinderella. So you know what? I'll put it in chat so it's on the record. There we go. That is the, uh, yep, modded. Raunched. Yeah, raunchy and crunchy. Yeah. Oh, wait, raunchy is already a word. But I, I don't think you would object to it, frankly. Uh, Izzy, uh, I am mending my shirt because I got a hole in it. Uh, when I was delivering a package to an apartment, it caught on the doorknob of the apartment as I was ducking in and tore a hole in it. And I really like this shirt. Now, I could just, you know, do the modern thing of uh, buying a new one, but uh, I like the shirt enough to uh, save it. And the hole is small enough that it's like, well, why not? Why don't I go for um, the old school method of uh, waste not, want not? Yeah, I know. It is a big capital no. Yeah, <sighs> stinky, stinky doorknob. I was in a rush. So... I do kind of only have myself to blame, and for what it's worth, I tend to think of luck as a seesaw. Um, can I hang on my camera up? Yeah, here I am. Hi. Uh, I tend to think of luck as a seesaw. You know, what goes down must come up. 
So uh, immediately, or about an hour after I tore this hole in my shirt, um, I ended up finding a really nice pair of work gloves on the sidewalk. And it's just like they were, well, no, they were on the road in a parking spot. We practically ran over them with the truck. Uh, but it was um, fortuitous because they fit perfectly. So in any case, yes, yeah, Seesaw's the camera demonstration. Exactly. Did you ever see a saw? Universe apologizing to you. Yeah, big Nagito uh, energy. <laughs> I guess a big Nagito would just be a Nago. <laughs> okay. Yeah, down and up. All right. Down and... Can you guys see this? Oh my big stinky meat hooks aren't in the way. Boop. Okay. Oh, I need to make it a bit wider than that. Well, yeah, obviously, if um, mosquito implies um, Susi Saka, what? Shut up. Sasuke! Susie Saka. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, it's so so anyway. Sasuke. Uh, I think, I think Danganronpa's given me my fill of seesaws for a little while at least. Okay, I see how to do this now. That's really cool. This is actually really cool. <sighs> That's really cool. Down. And up. Yeah, alright. This is actually pretty analogous to, um, to pixel art. I'm sure I could find a way to, uh... I mean, I, I know my, my mom used to, or at least, I think she probably still does. Yeah, there's no reason she wouldn't have stopped. Uh, she uses Microsoft Excel uh, to diagram her stitch patterns, because you can color in squares. I guess that makes it Cruxel art. I was thinking of um, calling it Cruxel art. Although I don't know if there's a need for a term like that, because people have probably been doing that for a long time. But Crux would be the root if it's a cross stitch anyway. Sus si sa ka. Yeah. Working with textiles is so fun. Yeah, this is. It's interesting. Yeah, I know a bunch of people who do that with crochet patterns. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So, yeah, I can think of... It, it feels analogous to pixel art to me because I'm looking at, like, units of thread. Hello, Mixie. How are you tonight? How are you, Mixie? Oh, and Izzy. Um, I got so excited about wrenching you that I didn't uh, ask you. How was your day? How was your day, Izzy? And how was your day, Mixie? Let's see. Hmm. All right. I want to try it out too, but I just started a new job. Congratulations on your new job. I hope it isn't a pain. At least I'll be able to buy yarn now. Hell yeah. I, I am a little bit off the seam line. All right, let's see. Yeah, tell us about the new job if you want. I'm doing well. I've been typing up cards for the D&D &D setting that I've been working on. Phenomenal. That sounds really cool. The um, the one where it's like set in um, suburbia. Day was really good. I got to sell people spray paint accessories for the first time. So that was, to oh wow. Spray paint accessories, that's cool. So like stencils or do you mean nozzles on the cans themselves? No cap. I work at this like really small art supply store. Nice. So how's this video doing it? Okay. 
How did, let me, okay, I see how it is. Thank you guys. You're very welcome. Yeah, it sounds great. Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life because nobody's hiring. <laughs> yeah, I'm really happy for you. Okay, I see it. I see it. It's a gigantic pump thing that goes along with painting. Oh, a compressor? I've seen some videos of people filling up fire extinguishers with paint and doing 40-foot sprays on those highway dividers. Those are crazy. I wonder if you could fill, like, an industrial uh, boat pressure washer with paint. That would be pretty crazy, too. Yes, that setting. A couple of players asked me how to make spell cards with them, uh, for them with ideas on how to break the magic. I think so, Izzy says. Break the magic? So, like, well... A lot of people define magic as, uh, with Clark's third law, of, like, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Um, I tend to think of magic as being more like rules that break other rules. So what do you mean, break the magic? Do you mean, like, in a way that is immersive for the setting? Spell cards that don't sound like magic, but are more akin to the setting? That are a better fit for the setting, rather? Dads in driveways. Oh man, it's too bad it's already taken, but you could have called it diners, drive-ins, and dives. Okay. Most of the spells require a way to be explained away. Mm, I see. Gift cards. How about gift cards? Just get them in gift card format. Sitcoms and suburbs. Nice. All right. All right. All right. A modern setting without any magic involved. So we're going with sitcoms and suburbs. Thank you. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a fun project. It's so cool to see everyone approaching the creative arts at a completely different angle. I mean, I'm sure most of you know my pedantry about pixel art and uh, non-humanoid aliens. It's cool to see people who have completely different uh, ideas on what makes a good story or what makes a good creative uh, project. Dang. Ah, oh, dang. There we go. I think that's it. There we go. Just trying to keep this in the focus of the camera. Oh, is it focused? I'm not sure. Eh, say lovey. Say lovey. The backside looks kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, okay, so you always go immediately to the right or behind the previous exit. All right. Wow. It's kind of crazy how many craft stores there are in my town, but so few of them actually sell needle and thread. I had to borrow this from a, uh, a store downtown, or, um, yeah, just before they closed. I'll have to return it in the morning. But it's nice to be nice, because they were all too willing to lend this to me, because I'm so, uh, careful with the packages I deliver, apparently. Honestly, I could probably benefit from these same tutorials you're watching with my hats. Maybe so, maybe so. I've noticed you're, you're, you have this, um... Recreate the OG purple plaid one. Nice. Nice. The Grand Prix Bela original. <laughs> okay. Nice. It's a little disjointed, but like... Oh, 
there is love in every stitch. There we go. I love that they lent it to you. Oh, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I'm not a big fan of living in this town. It is very cold. It's very, very cold. And I'm just not a cold weather animal, unfortunately. But it's nice to have developed a little sense of community here. Am I poking through the backside or am I just going through the hole? Let's see. Let's see. Damn. Yes, yes, okay, cool. I love that they lent it to you. Yeah. Yeah, it was really nice of them. They also sell, um, like, chocolates and jewelry. But it is really funny to me how many craft stores are in this town that but they don't actually sell like the base of the product itself. Like there is one store I know of that sells needle and thread, but they're closed until tomorrow at eleven. Or twelve or something. But um there's like a dozen craft stores here, but none of them none of them sell needle and thread. weird I mean I guess I wouldn't expect an architect to sell individual bricks I guess I wouldn't expect a bakery to sell you know bags of flour but it still struck me as a little odd given that a craft store would ought to be especially if it has a place and a name that implies that it's a place where you can do your own crafts well there's some lag in my end just so you know I don't really know how to do anything about that by the way Hold on, there is a message that's come up here. Not enough video to maintain smooth streaming. Open widget. What uh, What do I do about that? Output, video rate, 5,000. Try to up the bit rate, by the way. Hopefully that works. Everything except fabric softener. Well, yeah, I w Come on. Come on, come on. How do I improve this? What the hell? Not receiving enough video. What does it mean it's not receiving enough video? Oh, wow, that's... Oh, man, that looks all... Hmm. Turning down video settings or using a faster encoding preset. Output. Can I, um... What the hell? Video. Output scaled resolution. Crap. Oh, I can't... Um, hmm. I think I might have to try um, turning down the quality of the camera, maybe? From to down to 720? Oh, stinky. I don't think that'll help, though. That Yeah, that's not going to help. What the hell? Silly. Um, what the hell? Audio bitrate, apply, apply that. Encoder overloaded, faster encoding preset, but I can't do that without turning down the recording. Yeah, that's not correct. 
that's that's not going to solve the issue. Settings output encoder. I can't change the encoder. Encoder preset. Is that going to help? Dang, that's annoying. Can you guys at least hear me? It is a pain. It is a pain. I wish this thing had a, a more Twitch-like interface in that it would just be the same URL for the stream the whole time. Encoder overloaded. Turning down video settings or using a faster encoding preset. I set it to fast. Stream. Send the chart I use. The chart you use? I can't change this stuff well. Turn off any outputs to change video settings. Dang. For the equivalent bit rate. Well, I, I just had it set to 4,000. What if I turn down the... It's not getting enough video then. Encoding overloaded. Why is encoding overloaded? This is... Oh, man. Man, this is stinky. It's using 100% of my GPU. We can hear you, just not see ya. All right. That's strange. That's strange. Encoding overloaded. Turning on video settings or using a... All right, how do I do that? Output. Um, can I pause it? Stream health, edit. I don't think I can do that on YouTube's end. It says YouTube's not receiving enough video. Keep the stream going from there. I don't have a smartphone. What happens if I just turn off the camera? Encoding overloaded. Kilobits per second is fine. Uh, OBS is maxing the um, the GPU. What if I just close every every other tab I have, except for the tutorial? Encoding hidden by bits and resolution. <laughs> Dang. Turning down the video settings or using a faster encoding preset. But I can't do that while the video is active. <sighs> Crap. There's no reason this should be happening right now. Close Discord. I can't really close anything else. Dang. Okay, I'm going to try to close um, my browser, and I'll be right back. Okay, so hopefully... I, I don't know if this is going to do anything. Dang it. Custom encoder settings, speed... 164,000. Dang. Stream. I can't change any of that. Okay. That's weird. That's wacky. Extensions. Turn off a bunch of extensions, I guess. See if that saves anything. Frick. I don't think that's going to do anything at all. Yeah, that's not going to have done anything at all. Dang it. Users will experience buffering. <sighs> okay, fine. Well, I've got the camera on anyway. Crapola. 
Why is it like this? Encoding overloaded. General output. It's not receiving enough video. Crap. Okay, I'm going to stop the stream and I'm going to... I'm going... On OBS, you can stop streaming. A little robot guy over the hole. You'll have to redline... Are we back? Are we back? I tried changing it to the software encoder. That took a lot of uh, load off the GPU. Oh, smooth again. Okay. Cool. Okay. Let's pick up where we left off. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I changed it to the software encoder. Alright. Yes, looks good. Nice. Hopefully it stays that way. Okay. Cool. Okay. Back to it. Alright. Thanks for your help with the technical difficulties, everyone. Very helpful. Thank you. Okay. 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 Okay, now we're doing the closing knot. Okay. All right. Thank you, Cinderella. So very very cool wow yeah textile work is really fun this is actually pretty fun what in the hell whole foreign world just opened up to me phenomenal there we go that's really freaking cool um one more for the road there we go let's see Can I get that through there? There we go. New hobby unlocked. Yeah, I just opened up an entire branch on the tech tree. There we go. Nice. All right. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and... Can I switch to BRB? Do I have my mic audio muted on this one? No, I don't. Okay, so I'm just going to go and get some scissors. go I'm back uh, this one there we go okay I'm I feel like I might have to trim these intermediates maybe I don't know but all right and now how does miss Cinderella here do it okay I'm just as close to the knot as I can for me. 
making sure it's as tight as possible. Nice. All right. Mixie says, my sister got into embroidering during COVID and she started turning pet portraits into patches for a friend. It's so much fun watching the process. Yeah, I can imagine. That sounds really cool. What do you mean turning them, turning pet portraits into patches? Like, like jean jacket patches, leather jacket patches, or turning pet portraits. So like a, a photo of the animal and, and embroidering it, rendering it embroidery format. All right. Nice. Where did the rest of the thread go? <sighs> Damn, Dragon Rider's a pern over here wondering where the thread went. That was my radiator coming on. Okay. <laughs> nice. Um, and I guess I should... However this was, I should tuck the needle back into the spool. The spool. All right. Dang. Dang, you really need like a guitarist thumb for this. I recall trying to create a patch of the breath symbol. Patch of the breath, like the Zelda game, uh, from Homestuck, but getting bored before finishing. <laughs> oh, I actually, I think I have a Homestuck hoodie. I don't know where I got it, though. Like, I, it, it's right there, over there in the closet. Hold on. Eh, good enough. All right. Well, let's see it from the other side now. cha -chan. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah, she creates a pattern in her head and basically prints it onto the fabric with her. That's freaking crazy. That's freaking crazy. Very cool. Oh. <laughs> Look, I, um, I stitched through the hem by mistake. Mm, say la vie. All right, cool. Cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Where did I have this originally? It was about there, was it? Dang it. Well, maybe I'll fix that later. Maybe I won't. Yeah, not too bad. Shirt saved, Pog. Excellent. <laughs> That's really cool. That is going to bother me. That is absolutely going to bother me. Dang it. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad, all things considered. Yeah, not bad. Huh. Interesting. I'm proud of myself. That's cool. That's really cool. The short also come in blapk. <laughs> Alright. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I suppose I should have noted that it was getting a little harder to stitch there. What can I do about that? You did it! I've done the same thing so many times, it's so annoying. Yeah, you know what? I If I don't fix it now, I'm never going to fix it, so I might as well do it now. All right. Let's try that. So what can I do? Do I just snip the part that's joining those two together? Let's see. I think it might only be the final knot that's doing that. Craftsmanship looks really good to me. Thank you. I think it might only be the final knot that's doing, that's binding those together. If I do this. Will that do it? Nope, but there's a little more to it. I sewed I sewed a patch in my jean jacket and completely forgot it was on a pocket. <laughs> oh man, that stinks. Crap. Well, I mean at least I didn't use invisible thread. Microtonic subscale structure. Oh, the substructury filaments are uh, misaligned. Creating a super colloidal filamentary bicatalectral inversion. <sighs> what now? Oh my goodness. 
Oh no, had to clear out an entire section. Oh, that stinks. Yeah, knowing me, if I don't fix this now, I'll never fix it, so... I'll fix it now! We're doing it live! We're doing it live! What would be the best way to prevent this going forward? What if I put this on top of a mirror? So I can see the underside and the overside at the same time. I wonder if that would work. It's okay, the patch was worth it. I'm glad. I'm glad you saved it then. Oh, man. Might be easier to pull the thread out instead of cutting it. Just risk pulling out the original stitching instead. Hmm. I mean, for what it's worth, this isn't the most complex thing I've done with my webcam and hands in tandem. The most complex was probably the time I tried to use my webcam to get a look inside my own ear to pop a pimple inside my own ear. That was annoying. I didn't stream that, obviously. That's grotesque, but it was a similarly complicated procedure. Made doubly complex by the fact that, you know, I can't turn my head while I'm looking at the camera because then my ear moves away from the camera. That was a, a difficult process, but I, I solved that problem. And there was the time that I tried to cut my hair on the back of my head using my webcam as well by clamping the webcam to the back of the chair. That actually went really well. There we go. There we go. Now that's a Cube Escape puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not quite smashing a light bulb to uh, get the filament to use the filament as a lockpick, but uh... <laughs> Yeah, using, using, um... I mean, well, yeah, Past Within literally has an ear pimple as a, a plot point. Strange. All right, all right. Yeah, I should trim away the excess threads here as well. All right. I, I see where I went wrong. I didn't confirm that it was uh, unfolded at first. It's as grotesque as some of the puzzle. Yeah, that's fair. That's probably going to become more frayed if I allow it to remain. Goodbye, you are gone. Closer inspection, wrong. <laughs> what do you guys think about, um... Actually, yeah, we have three other craftsmen in, um, in chat here. Three people who've done work with, um, textiles. How would I say this? Do you guys have a favorite fabric? I don't really know much about this uh, discipline at all. So if you have a favorite fabric to work with or a favorite fabric to look at or feel or whatever, what's the best one? Any opinions? Let's do this right this time. I 
I see some thonking in chat. Hmm, I guess cotton. More categorized in type of hat. Let's see. I guess I kind of got to go at it backwards now from the other end. Friends, I have found myself in a predicament. Oh, what's that sticky wicket predicament there? Too many spaghetti? Oh no. Cotton is great, super accessible. Yeah, I bet it would be. It's crazy how, um... Have you ever seen those drawings of, um, the, uh... What's it called? The Barbary Sheep? It was like a medieval idea of where cotton came from, so they literally draw the cotton plant as it's shaped like a sheep, and the stalk goes up into the umbilicus. As if the entire sheep were growing on a plant. And it just eats the grass around it and grows cotton as wool. It's so funny. Reasoning by analogy. Bella says, like trucker hats suck really bad. They have cardboard in the brims instead of plastic and are way cheaper. So of course I made a trucker hat in Hella Jeff. <laughs> yeah, lol. When you mom come home and make it a spaghetti. Alien dancing. A 100% real no fake Marcianito. Why do you have too many spaghetti, Mixie? You drop your spaghetti? Spilling out of your pockets? Or is it more just that you, um... It's not like I, I made too... It's not like I made this for you or anything. I just made too much. Crochet the spaghetti, by the way. Same and real. Dang. Let, let's, let's make deathly certain that we have this correct. Edible yarn. Not wrong. Not wrong. Favorite macaroni shape, Izzy. Or pasta shape in general. I cooked too much. Baku. Baka. Mikushi stikusu. Now I'm thinking about that cursed video with this girl slurping a spaghetti strand through a piercing hole. Have you seen the one where it's the girl with, like, the, the, um, I think she has, like, a pet snake going through her piercing holes? The ones that look like pumpkins? Hell yeah. And the honeycomb shape. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Whichever one has the greatest surface area to volume ratio is gonna absorb the most cheese. Ah. Uh, exactly. Well, and also, um, greatest surface area to volume ratio cooks faster, so you can enjoy the spaghetti faster at light speed. I always like spaghetti best because long boys weirdly satisfying texture. Yeah, it's got this sort of like bounciness to it. Angel hair cooks the fastest, I'm pretty sure. I don't think there's anything with a greater ratio of surface area to volume than angel hair. And certainly, I'm pretty sure it has the greatest possible packing density. So you can fit more of it in the cupboard, too. It's like um, in Wallace and Gromit, when they go to the moon. When they go to the moon in Wallace and Gromit, and Wallace is rifling through the cupboards for cheese and crackers, right before the rocket takes off, right? But with me, it's angel hair pasta. All right, let's check my work before I start. Much better. I used angel hair like every day in university because I was too tired to cook anything complicated. Same, and it's cheap. I like angel hair pasta for a while because thin spaghetti. Quickest way to get food and body. Yeah, absolutely. Efficient, effective. When you want to be a um, spaghettiur of um, sheer will and determination. Alright, and now it's time to backstitch back up here. Backstitch is back, alright. Not for freedom or for pleasure. Nothing ever lasts forever. 
Everybody rock your body right. Back streets back, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I don't think that actually tied a knot. Oh, no, that didn't work. I didn't tie the knot through the... I didn't tie the knot around the stitch. That's... Oh, man. <sighs> One... <sighs> what, too many spaghetti do to a motherfucker? Gotta go for now, unfortunately, but I'm glad you were able to salvage your shirt. Uh-oh, demonetized. Uh-oh, someone called the exorcist. I've been demonized. Have a good night, Izzy. <laughs> Dang. Oh, well, I'll just tie another knot. Easy. I wasn't actually going through the fabric. That's funny. There we go. There we go. There we go. There it is. Nice. How's the song with Logan going? Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. That, um, I need to find a time where... My neighbors are out, but I am in so that I don't get noise complaints. But um, more importantly, um, it's going well. It's going well. I believe we have the lyrics finalized. I believe we have the harmonies finalized. Uh, I wanted to talk to him about um, the timing, because I feel like there's not enough space between um, the first verse and the first chorus, I think. Also, I don't know all of the lyrics because of the way he sings is so angelic that it's hard for human ears to understand. <sighs> so I, I, I do actually need to ask him for a, uh, a printout of the lyrics. And, uh, my harmonies ended up have, I, I think you were in chat when I posted that the harmony line after some modification that makes it easier for me to sing, uh, has ended up sounding a little bit like the calendar by panic, which, uh, not something I mind at all. A great song, frankly. These words are not meant for mere mortal. Yeah. He writes in a Nokian, dude. He sings in Enochia, and he's, he, he's, he's speaking English sideways when he sings. Truly, truly beautiful. But then again, of course, Brendan Yuri stores his extra lungs in his forehead, so no one can really compete with that either. Oh, that's so satisfying. There we go. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Very nice. Now I can do the back stitch. Yeah, getting the um getting the spacing right is the most difficult bit, it seems. Non Euclidean lyrics. There we go. It's maybe more that it's just a curse of knowledge. You know, he knows them so well that he sings them uh, as naturally as he can. I don't know. That's not the most important issue. The most important issue is just finding the time to record. Yeah, Logan is a smooth, like, soft butter sound. And someone makes the quick changes work, which is just satisfying to hear. Yeah, I can't get those changes done. He's got... He, the, the harmony line he wrote. 
The harmony line he wrote sounds like uh, it's got like a bunch of fifths and eighths or something like right off the bat. It's like it's like I don't know, learning Baba Black Sheep, but you're an alien or something. But but when it's smoothed out for my voice, and I have a weird way of um, enunciating certain sounds, I want to, if not match his vocal, I don't necessarily. Of course, I don't want to match his vocal quality because what's the point of a harmony then? But I want to, um, I want to make sure that um, my my lyrics don't have the sort of precision that I use when I speak, just so it fits the mood of the song better. And I wish you good luck with the song. Thank you, Mixie. I hope your neighbors leave. Thanks. I I kind of hope so too. I'm working six days a week and it's crazy, but um, making that money. Which leaves Sundays free for that kind of stuff, or late nights. What if I told you Baba Black she was just Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Memes in 2017. <laughs> Dolphin noises. <sighs> I can't. I don't know. Mr. Krabs is a. Uh... Mr. Krabs is a vine boom sound effect. I'm super excited then. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it only comes down to figuring out when the ideal time to record is. We got everything figured out besides that. Admittedly, the idea I have in mind for the music video is probably a lot more complex than we can actually achieve, but it'll be really fun to try and take a nice, good stab at it. All right. Let's see how that looks. Cha-chan! Nice. Oh, wait. You can't see it. There we go. Nice. Very cool. Good enough for me. Nice. That feels really good. I feel accomplished. I feel alive. All right. Very cool. So what are you guys going to do for the rest of your night, if anything? I was thinking about turning this into a gaming stream, but um, I just want to go to bed, frankly. You guys gonna do anything else for the rest of the night? Bella says, I think you and Logan's disparate vocal qualities would make for a really interesting dynamic. Thank you. I, I think it'll sound really good, too. Hopefully, um, I won't have the sort of... Yeah, I'm, I don't want the... I don't know where I learned my accent from. You know, like Dexter, Dexter's Lab has this thick Teutonic accent. Dee Dee, get out of my laboratory! despite all of his family sounding like average Ohio middle Americans. And it's like, so where does he learn that? You know, TV, radio? I just got to smooth out just a little bit. Bella says you're going to read more 1770-76, play RuneScape, 99 Agility. Nice. And maybe catch a bit of Logan's stream if he streams. Well, it's Monday, so I don't think he will, but... Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he'll make up for the fact that he was off for uh, seven days. I will finish the spaghetti. Good on you, Mixie. You do not forgetty the spaghetti. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Cool. Oog. Yeah. That looks really good. I'm proud of this. I'm proud of this. That feels really good. I sewed that up myself. And um, if I keep doing it, you know, practice makes perfect. I don't have his schedule memorized. Honestly, I don't think he does either, if I can be frank. And you know I don't mince words. I only mince meat. Mm. Well, um, I actually had a fun idea for a stream, which would be playing the Backrooms uh, complex found footage but with an overlay uh, on the lower third of the screen, like a transparent PNG of hands holding a package. So it's like I'm delivering something to the back rooms. I think that would be kind of funny. It's just like add an additional layer of narrative on top of it. So it's like uh, uh, UPS, uh, FedEx. <laughs> uh, I'm here for a pickup. I hope you have a good night, gamers. I might stream since I'm just typing lol. Lol, I love that. Thanks. I think that would be kind of funny. That would be, um... <laughs> just 
an interesting little gimmick for a backrooms game. Some of these places, Bale, I gotta send you some of the um, uh, pictures I've taken. Some of the places I'm delivering to genuinely have a backrooms-like quality to them. Oh man, it's it's strange to navigate through like these winding interior spaces. And sure, it's just some office or whatever. The backrooms is the perfect simulator of an office job, I guess. But it even also feels like you're not supposed to be there, so it's like delivering to an office and no one's there. Some of these places, like, there's this one building where there is an elevator which is has uh, two doors at right angles. So the whole, the elevator is like, especially if I RP the whole time. Yeah, exactly. So the whole, there's, um, there's these two glass doors and the elevator's here on the far wall, but the elevator is boarded off with wood and it's got... Each of the glass doors has a notice on it that says the elevator is due to open soon. But it's just a really weird arrangement. I gotta send you... The, I gotta put these pictures in Logan's chat. Send them my way. I frequent that liminal shite so hard. Yeah, I took a whole bunch of photos. And there's this, like, weird concrete ceiling jutting out from the top of the ceiling. It's, like, this weird, like, underhang as if there were machinery inside, but it's, like, on the fifth floor. Well, I'm looking for a Jason. Uh, yeah, yeah, Uber... Your Uber Eats is here. I feel like more Backrooms games should have game modes that aren't just a scary monster chasing you, or literally nothing. I mean, the complex found footage is brilliant. It's so elegant. It is the cleanest execution of the Backrooms game concept. But I think there needs to be a little more. I was thinking of three options. One, delivering something as if it's like a delivery simulator. So adding a Death Stranding, making it a Strand-type game. Number two, uh, Prop Hunt. So you're disguised as objects like Gmod Prop Hunt, and you have to find each other in the back rooms. I think that would be extraordinarily difficult, hence fun. So it's like everyone else is also the monster, but you're just hiding as some random piece of furniture, an armchair or something. Maybe you could even become a fake door. That would be kind of fun. So if you, like, assuming it's a back rooms game where you can open and shut doors, but, like, the fake doors don't open or something, like a trap chest, but as a trap door. But not, like, a trap door in the floor. Um... And the third one was uh, a scavenger hunt. So you would have a list. So there, let's say there's like... So in the complex, there's like this weird statue in the art gallery. So it would be things... Or the, the weird cop car like bounced on its ass side in a disused corner of a hallway or something. Some random offshoot room. Something like that. It would be things like that. There's maybe like 50 of them all throughout the back rooms. And then you get a list of like 10 of them. And each player has to find all ten of the items on their own list. And whoever wins first gets it. But I think multiplayer backrooms uh, would help make it feel a little less lonely while still preserving the liminality, as opposed to just having man with axe chase you. The con second an enemy chases you, it breaks the concept of the spook. From Prop Hunt Blast from early 2000s. Yeah, exactly. Wouldn't that be interesting? Wouldn't that be interesting? Yeah, because the setting is supposed to be the monster. I mean, sure... You know, the, the idea of Theseus and the Minotaur in the labyrinth goes back thousands of years, you know. <laughs> I saw a tweet once which was something like, um, if, if, you, uh, if you write a slash fic of Theseus x Minotaur, but you change the setting to a coffee shop, and you change Theseus out for Perseus and the Minotaur out for Cassiopeia, is it still the same ship? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> the ship of Theseus, Theseus slash Minotaur. <laughs> in any case yeah the setting is supposed to be the monster because not every labyrinth needs a minotaur at its center stalking its halls I think it's it's more interesting if you can almost feel the room breathing I like it I like it yeah I think it would be kind of neat see some VR liminal space simulators for meditative purposes nostalgia and stoicism that would be kind of cool I'm not quite sure I understand what you mean I think it would be an interesting concept as well. Let me put my, well, my interface over here so I can read chat um, from over here. In fact, I should have had chat right under my camera the whole time. So I'm looking at the camera, or in the camera's direction when I'm reading chat. Logan's pretty good about that. Let's see, so VR, VR liminal space simulators for meditative purposes, nostalgia and stoicism. What do you mean? Now, I said on the podcast that I think the future of VR is in making people vomit. Which is more to say that 
pushing the limits of the human sensory experience seems like the natural progression of having a screen half an inch from your face. <laughs> I think it would be funny if you had, like, um, magic eye type of shit, where if you have, um, you know, your entire left field of vision filled with red and your entire right field of vision filled with green, what does your stereo vision do to that? Wouldn't that be interesting? Like, what, what does red-green look like in a situation where you literally cannot avoid combining the two colors into your field of vision? A 90s Taco Bell room. Oh, kind of like that Burger King that they found behind a wall in um, Wilmington, Delaware. Did you hear about that? There was a, a Delaware um, shopping mall where they opened up a wall and found an entire perfectly preserved 1991 Burger King. And all the lights and still functioned and the plastic plants were still in good condition. And it was just there. And I guess the lights were consuming power the whole time, or maybe they found the light switch. Either way, it was just perfectly preserved, like an Indiana Jones time capsule. It's crazy. It was like, wow. Wow, the restaurants you sh used to actually have, like, comfy seating. I still want you to see the vlog of that Burger King. Oh, is she from uh, Delaware? Or within driving distance, I suppose? Interesting. Yeah, that would be crazy. There's something relaxing and melancholic about lim liminality. I think it'd be used for Zen experiences in addition to all the horror simulation. Yeah, I think so. Like, the uh, the pool area in the complex feels a lot more meditative, meditative and calmer. I think it's the only part of the back rooms in that game, anyway, that has daylight seeping in. There are a couple of meditative rooms in VR chat. Yeah. I can definitely see the value in that. Yellow, we talked about this on the podcast. She lives near. I don't remember us talking about that. But okay. I guess it is. You have a better memory for the uh, podcast anyway because you spend a billion hours listening to it as you're editing it. All right. So that makes an hour and 15. I have 3D glasses from the DVD release of Coraline, which that have. Oh, that's crazy. Uh, kind of like uh, these. I got 3D glasses. Yeah. But I'm, I'm talking about um, doing it with um, doing it in VR. So you would have the entire room, but rendered in one eye as red and one, rendered in one eye as green. Because red and green are um, color theory opposites, uh, I'm pretty sure. What, what's it called? The oppositional model? The opposition theory of color. Opponent theory of color. Opponent process theory of color vision. Yeah. Opponent color pairs based on... Yeah. Yeah, red and green are opposites. Yellow and blue are opposites. And white and black are opposites. Yeah. Sorry, I'm quite a bit behind on the stream for some reason. No worries. No worries. I think I was reading chat a bit out of order as well. Um... Yeah, that makes an hour and 15, so I think I'm going to call it here. Um, glad to have you guys' company tonight. Uh, oh, wow. I feel accomplished. I think Action Lab did a video about this. Yeah, yeah, like impossible colors, like red, green, or uh, blello, or... Um, I, uh, it's just hard to imagine. It's something that the human brain doesn't have a... My human brain doesn't have a frame of reference for yet. Okie dokie, have a good night. All right. See you, everyone. I only have a BRB screen, so I, I don't have, like, an outro screen or whatever. But hopefully this suffices. I made this mashup myself out of, um, uh, what's it called? Um, Orange Crush by REM and uh, Step um, Born to be Wild by Steppenwolf and um, Hungry Like the Wolf by Duran Duran. So I called the mashup Steppen Like the Wolf. But that almost makes me think of it would be like a Steppin' on the Beach Spongebob remix. Here we go. Yeah, and it's nice and slowed down Vaporwave style. Cool vibing with you tonight. Yeah. Great to see you guys. Yep, have a good night, everyone. I'm just waiting for that uh, DVD logo to hit the corner. <laughs> there it go. There it go. Boom. <laughs> All right. Yep, have a good night, everyone.